switching gears for a minute <clears throat> to talk about how we initialize a reservoir in a, uh, in a multi-phase calculation. And here we're only going to talk about uh, two-phase, so oil and water. <clears throat> so, of course, in a single phase, I just you give you the initial pressure, and you just plug it in, and that's it, right? But now you have pressure, pressures, potentially differing pressures for oil and water, and you have saturations of oil and water. So you have a lot more to initialize to start the simulation. So uh, the, the way we're going to start this, and you know, when you use CMG, this is sort of the process that it, you know, it, it automatically does a lot of this for you. Okay, when you use CMG, but this is the process that it sort of goes through. Okay, so you start the initial kind of starting point is the water pressure at the ref at a reference point and the best one is the water oil contact line. So the point where the saturation of water is one and there's only oil above it. Right? So this is ignoring some type of transition region that we know really exists. But uh, if we assume that um, there's no transition region, the place where the saturation of water is one and there's only oil above that is the water oil contact line. At the water oil contact line, the capillary pressure is the capillary entry pressure from the capillary pressure saturation curve. Right? So, so at the water oil contact line, we know what the pressure of the if, if we know what the pressure of the water is at the water oil contact line, and we know the capillary entry pressure, we can compute the pressure of the oil. So at the water oil contact line, we know the well the pressure of the oil. We know the pressure of the water. So then if we know the pressure of the oil and the water, we can just use the static head pressure, right? hydrostatic head pressure, via these equations to compute the pressures for every ith grid block. And so in this case, if you see the i here, I'm talking about the ith grid block corresponding to the z height of the ith grid block. Okay. So every grid block, you know, if we're talking about a vertical reservoir, every grid block will have some z distance, right? And so via these equations, these things you know, after you've done this, you know this, you can compute the pressure at the ith grid block for the oil and the water, okay? So then you know the pressure of the oil and the water at the ith grid block, you can compute the capillary pressure at the ith grid block, right? Via the capillary pressure inhibition drainage curves, right? I'm, I'm sorry, via this equation. So you just use this equation. You know everything. Use this. You know the capillary pressure. Then, now that you know the capillary pressure, you can compute the saturation via the capillary pressure inhibition drainage curve, which is a function. It's capillary pressure is a function of saturation. So, you know, th this is a sort of picture of our vertical reservoir. We have water only at the bottom. There could be some possible transition region, a water oil zone. Above that is oil only. Right? Uh, gas is in solution as long as the pressure is above the bubble, bubble point. And then you can have an, another gas oil transition zone and a gas cap above that. So in what we're talking about here, we're going to ignore gas completely. And we're also going to assume that this water oil zone, uh, you know, the, there's a, a definitive point where we can say is a water oil contact line with saturation is one. But we're, the, assum the other assumption is, is that the oil migrating to the rock, displacing the water. And this is drainage, OK? So that's, this, we're going to, when we look at our capillary pressure versus saturation curves, we're going to look at the drainage portion of it to determine what the saturation should be. So if this is our, if we now discretize our reservoir into grid blocks, we're going to go to the water oil contact line. That's where the saturation is one. Okay. And then these steps over here are the same as what we're on the previous page, right? So we're going to go to the water oil contact line. 
And here, then, then here the, we know that capillary pressure is the capillary entry pressure, PD, right? And so at that point, then we can initialize, we have this point that we can initialize these two curves, the blue line being the, the curve associated with the hydrostatic head of water, right? The black line being associated with the hydrostatic head of oil. And the difference in those two curves is the pr capillary pressure. Right? So as we go up the reservoir, so we know this point. Right? We know this point. We can compute that point. Then we can go up the reservoir computing the pressure of the oil and the water, the pressure of the oil and the water, the pressure of the oil and water, the pressure of the oil and water. Assign those values to those grid blocks. The capillary pressure is just then the difference in those two. So then we can go to our capillary pressure versus saturation curve, look at the drainage section, and just read off what the saturation should be because we know the capillary pressure. So the capillary pressure of this grid block would be here, so the saturation is here. Ca capillary pressure of this grid block is here, so the saturation is here. And that's how we initialize the reservoir. So whenever you go into CMG, this is sort of all automatically done for you. And in fact, there's for a wide class of sort of uh, common reservoir rocks, it in fact already has tables of capillary pressure versus saturation. So you don't even have to upload them. You just go and select, you know, Brea sandstone. And it'll have this for you. But you can certainly, if you have your own, you know, capillary pressure versus saturation data, then you can upload that and it'll tabulate it and then initialize the reservoir via that data. So when you do that, then you'll get some water saturation profile that looks like this. So at the water roll contact line, the water saturation is one, and then it goes on to the residual water saturation. So that's just a repeat of, of the first slide. Uh, go through that process. So 